Yeah, so people like, have been talking about this game for a long time. I see it played everywhere. It's got a good theme, like basically the theme of Rampage, same yep. theme. <laughs> and uh, it shot up the Board Game Geek rankings. I'm pretty sure it's way up there. Let me see exactly where it is. Yep, it, it has an average rating of 7.45. It's ranked 108. I think it. I think it's actually higher on the actual straight up list. No, nope, on the straight up list, it's 108. Oh, okay. On the family game list, it's 16. Whoa, that's pretty good. Yeah, like uh, that's every board game fucking ever. <laughs> 16 family games. Like wow, that's that's a big. But I want to take it aside because this game, King of Tokyo, and several other games that are like it that have come out in recent history, are all just Yahtzee with a twist. Not saying that's bad. I'm saying almost everyone we've talked to has never played Yahtzee. Right. So How the let's fuck list the games. Did that you are get through your life and not run into Yahtzee? Yahtzee is like <laughs> one under Monopoly and one above Candyland in terms of basic games everyone plays with their so family. So here are the games that are just like Yahtzee. Uh, roll through the ages, not through the ages, but roll through the ages. Uh, Skyline. Was that the one? Yeah, Skyline. All right. Uh, um, what was the game? I played it at Anime Boston where you colonize the planet. I forget. You forget? Alien Frontier? Yeah. Is that Yahtzee? Yeah, that's Yahtzee. Okay. Yeah, uh, there's just tons of freaking games that are all actually just <laughs> Yahtzee. Uh, I guess, you know, Zombie Dice is sort of Yahtzee-ish. Not exactly, but sort of. Yeah, basically, these are the games, it is Alien Frontiers from before, where you roll a bunch of dice, usually five, and then you pick which ones you want to keep and re-roll the rest, and do that twice. It's basically the same mechanic as draw poker, only you get to draw twice. And it's, I mean, Yahtzee's been around forever. Yahtzee is one of those old-ass games that's super studied ever, at least I assume until recently, everyone I'd ever met had played it, and suddenly... You know, I'm introducing these games to people, and I'm like, oh, yeah, it's basically Yahtzee, but with uh, an attack component. And they're like, Yahtzee? What? You mean the guy that talks about games online? And I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck is wrong? <laughs> so if you know, basically what Yahtzee games come down to is, you know, the, is probability, right? And there's different combinations of the die results will result in different scores or points or whatever. So you, you need to know what you need, right, in terms of score. You want more points, generally. And, you know... All of them have different odds. High-scoring things, and if the game is well-designed, have low odds, and things that score low ha are very easy to roll, relatively speaking, in terms of percentages. But you roll all the dice initially, and you see what your results are, and thus you need to calculate, aha, knowing that my first roll, now I can see certain scoring possibilities are more or less likely. Something that might be more points might actually be more likely than something that is less points, given the dice I have already rolled. Like, I've already got three sixes. So rolling two sixes on two dice, right, it, and with two chances to roll them, that's pretty likely right now, actually. You know, whereas it was incredibly unlikely when I rolled just all the dice to begin with. So any game that has that mechanic of roll dice, pick some, and do the poker thing until you have your set, and then deploy the set in some fashion onto a board or a score sheet... If you play Yahtzee until you can play it basically perfectly... Where the winner is basically random based on the look of the dice. You'll be good at all of those games because once you master that, that's the core of the game and all the other stuff is just increasingly obtuse ways right. of actually maximizing the roll after you roll it or understanding what is worth more points in a game like Alien Frontier. It's worth noting, I played Alien Frontiers for the first time at Anime Boston and yeah... I just played Yahtzee, and I won by so much it was ridiculous. Right. Like, if I play Yahtzee against some kid, like a middle school or high school kid who at least understands what's going on, unless they're the really smart kid, you know, I'm just going to win. If Scott and I play, we might as well just if, flip a card. If me and Rim play, let's just post, keep taking the score sheets over and over again. It's probably going to come out to 50% winning after so enough So, Scott, games. here's a bit of trivia. In the standard, standard, officially published rules of Yahtzee, what is the maximum possible score? I think you can only get a certain number of Yahtzees. Yes. Right? Do you know how many? Because I had to look it up. I did but not remember. I believe, I'm trying to remember, I think that my Yahtzee score sheets that I had when I was a kid, official ones, said I got a triple Yahtzee 
You would get like 500 or something. Oh, no, triple Yahtzee. That was a different game. Was it? Yes. Oh, I guess we had triple Yahtzee. Yes, you had triple Yahtzee. Because if you Yahtzee. had three Yahtzees in one game, you, you would score a triple Yahtzee to get a, many hundreds, right? And then, right, so that you could you could keep filling those up. And basically what would happen is if you managed to get enough Yahtzees, you wouldn't X out your Yahtzee hole. So you would keep rolling even after everyone else had filled their score sheets and you could keep going and going. Yeah, so in the standard game, there are 13 chips. Mm. And you can get on chip for every additional Yahtzee you get. So if you get all 13 and you max out the rest of the game, your maximum total score is 1,575. Okay, that sounds about right. Unless Wikipedia. I just remember high. Yeah, I remember good me. Yahtzee scores would be in like the high 800, 900s or low thousands. Yep. It's, you know, if you got a Yahtzee, that's like hundreds. But so seriously, you're... in general, if you want to be good at games, and I feel like I'm going to add this to some of our panels for the next time we talk about this stuff, Yahtzee itself is, while it's not a good game for people who know better, it is a great game to learn a lot of the basic skills of gaming. Yeah, you're not going to be good at games unless you can master Yahtzee. And Yahtzee is so transparent and easy to master just because it's not trying to hide or conceal anything with theme or anything like that. So if you just play a lot of Yahtzee until you've mastered it, then you're going to be really good at all these other games we're talking about. Because it teaches you sort of opportunity cost. About It teaches you odds. It Math. teaches you <laughs> when you're falling behind, you've got to go for things that are less and less likely to catch up. Yep. The Hail Mary. Yep. It, it the game it also teaches you dice rolling and jigaboo jonesing yep because you roll in that cup i learned how to cheat as a kid by swirling the dice at the end or putting them in having two dice that i swirl while one's banging around in the middle and then immediately flipping the cup over i could consistently give myself three of a kind or really good odds and getting along straight we ha I had basically, like, I didn't have the whole game. I had, like, remnants of the game because I think it was my great uncle's and it was mad old and decrepit. But it was basically, from the pieces left over, I could tell it was it had these orange dice and a cup and sort of a blue tray similar to a Yahtzee tray. Yep. And it, but all the dice had letters on them for letters. spelling. Yeah, I don't remember what the name of the game was. Maybe, yeah, let me see if I can find it on uh, Board Game Geek. So, yeah, King of Tokyo is at its core Yahtzee, but instead of deploying your dice to points, you deploy your dice to sort of one of three areas. You can either build up energy to buy superpowers, you can attack other players directly to kick them out of the game, or you can acquire victory points. Mm -hmm. And the way the game ends is if you get 20 victory points, you win, everyone else loses game over. If you are the last man standing before anyone has gotten 20 victory points, you win. Game over. Mm -hmm. So it adds that element. It's not a great game. It's eminently solvable. The odds, once you figure them out and once you know the strategy, there's not a lot going on there. It ends up having chip-taking game elements with the attacking, but the way it gets around that is very elegant. It's a very sort of, I can see why this is a Richard Garfield game. So way, the way it works is you roll your dice, and if you get the claws, which lets you attack, if you are in Tokyo, you do damage to everyone who's not in Tokyo. If you're not in Tokyo, you only do damage to the person who's in Tokyo. When you take damage and you're in Tokyo, you have the option to stay the fuck there anyway or to concede Tokyo to whoever hits you. If you stay in Tokyo all the way until your next turn... You get two victory points for remaining in Tokyo. So the game has this sort of sunk cost fallacy. Do I hold out? Or, oh, I've taken too much damage. I've got a bail. How much am I willing to risk on the next person's roll? Do I go for fucking other people or victory points on my own? And it adds just enough to where it's a good game to play as the light warm-up game before your real game. Because it takes 20 minutes to play this game. Okay. And I it takes five minutes to teach this game. I found the uh, word Yahtzee. It's spill and spell, also known as scribbage, which is now, I guess, known as word Yahtzee. But yeah, this is the exact one that I had. See it here with these orange dice and the cup? I've never seen that in my life. Yeah, there's apparently fuck tons of versions of it called spill and spell, scribbage, and word Yahtzee. So there you go. So, I don't know, what do you think of King of Tokyo? Because you played it with me. Well, King of Tokyo, I think, has some really elegant elements to it, right? Like the fact that the, the chip taking is based on are you in or out as opposed to I'm attacking this player. Right, it's basically you're forced into Tokyo, right, if you don't want to be. 
And then it's like, you know, you basically you either leave as soon as someone rolls a claw on purpose because you're going to die. Or and you, you hold out to the bitter fucking or end. Or you're, if you're going to if you're going to stay in there, you, you got to stay in there until it's your turn unless something freakish happens. Right. Like maybe, you know, uh, somebody rolls like four claws and it's like, OK, I didn't think it would roll four claws. Right. I thought I could make it around with my 10 health, but I guess not. So I'm going to pull out now. Right. Um but even then, if you get down in your health from like a four claw roll when you're in Tokyo and you're out of Tokyo, the person who just went in, you know, uh, if they if it becomes to, you know, whoever's in Tokyo, if they roll and do some damage, that might kill you off. So think of this. This you're is not why, safe, but you, just, you need to roll elegant. hearts. If you're in Tokyo, it's like King of the Hill. You're getting points for being in the King of the Hill place. But instead of basically now every other player is doing damage only to you. Well, if you're in Tokyo, you're doing damage to everyone else. So when you're in Tokyo, you're effectively getting an analog to victory points by doing damage because you're taking everyone else down equally. Mm -hmm. But if anyone attacks you, they're all attacking just you and knocking you out of the game. Yep. Uh, I think the strategy, having only played it a few times, is to stay the fuck out of Tokyo. I agree, because the first game I played, I stayed the fuck out of Tokyo, and I ended up winning. And the second game, I was trying to stay in a few times to get points, and I just died. Now, I wouldn't go for damage either. I'd let other players do that. Of course, then it's a brinksmanship game. But I would go for energy to buy the superpowers. And also uh, victory points. Just get his, Basically, take victory points opportunistically, so you're... Try to be, like, second place in victory points. That way, if someone blitzes toward the end, you can either beat them on the blitz or kill them. But you're not so far behind you can never catch up. Like, if you roll two threes, go for that third three. Get all those victory points. But otherwise, go all energy, buy as many superpowers as you can, and just be the invincible asshole who wins the game kind of on his own at the end when everyone else is kind of weak. Mm -hmm. I think that is the basic way to win. And staying out of Tokyo means you can roll hearts. So if you do take damage... You can, uh, you'll be good, right? But basically, it's a light game, quick to play, quick to teach, could be reboxed into basically a tiny bag. Yeah, and anyone can learn and play this game, right? So it's it's sort of like you can get people who are less gamery to play a game that does have some good strategies in it, right, that they normally might be averse to playing. The theme is excellent. Awesome theme. The art with, is great. The pieces are super high quality. Right? There's a there's a monster for every personal taste. Like, I like all the monsters except King Kong because he's lame. I think the Kraken and the Evil Bunny are you my favorite. You mean the Kraken? Kraken. It's a Kraken. It's a Titan? <laughs> Have you never been mellow? Of course, I think I picked... At first, when I saw the cover of the box, I, you know, because usually in Rampage, I always pick Lizzie. So I was thinking I'd either be the Godzilla or I'd be the uh, the Cyber Bunny because, I mean, Cyber, right? Yeah. But then when I opened the box, I saw, oh, there's a Kraken. That's basically just as good as the dinosaur. He's got a good face, The too. Godzilla, right? He's got a big And then I saw claw. the Mecha Dragon. I'm like, well, fuck. I mean, that's, you know, that slightly edges the other ones out, but all of them are great except for the friggin' King Kong. Now, I would compare this, actually, to Skyline. Mm. That game, that wasn't it like part of the Kickstarter for uh, the, Ground Floor? Yeah, it's much better than Ground Floor. Well, Ground Floor is a shit game. We yeah. talked about that. But Skyline was kind of fun, but it's basically just a shorter Yahtzee. Skyline is to Yahtzee what Euchre is to Wiss. Mm -hmm. So between Skyline and King of Tokyo... I think King of Tokyo is a better game. I also agree because Skyline didn't have as many of the interactive elements. Yep, the only Skyline interactive has element, no brinksmanship. The only brinksmanship it had was like the one piece left, you know, the, that extra piece you leave over in the storage or whatever. Yep, What's it yep. called? The leftover bits that someone else can grab. All of, right? Yeah, that was it. Yeah, that's it. Whereas this one, it's like you're directly Yahtzee and you need to react to people, right? If someone... You know, if you see, it's like, you know, if, if it's depending on who's in Tokyo, you might re-roll a claw, you know, not to hurt them, right? Because they're going to lose anyway. You're better off getting some points or something. Yep. Right? Let them stay in there and get killed by someone else who you know is vicious. It adds a little bit more sort of randomness, but it's it's the Yahtzee randomness that's heavily mitigatable by odds. You know exactly the risk you're taking by going for X over Y over Z. And the odds of six-sided dice are trivial to calculate in your head. You don't even need to calculate them. You just need to have the rough feel of them. I mean, I've played Yahtzee from my childhood probably over a thousand times. 
Because mm. it was like it's like the family game. Like every family would play it. I'd go over to friends' houses and they would all play it. Like everyone played Yahtzee. We played in school, in like yeah. elementary school. Uh, I had a book of Yahtzee score sheets, and they were empty. So I had a second book of Yahtzee score sheets. So that's we, how many. So, yeah, it's how many. And uh, yeah, one Yahtzee score sheet can play Yahtzee like fucking six times on both sides. We had a Yahtzee box from the fifties. Mm. Like late fifties, maybe early sixties. Well, we had we had a and triple the, Yahtzee, and the score and sheets I think were we all full of like my parents playing it when they were kids. Yep, yep. I think that was the triple Yahtzee we had was my parents' one, and then I think I had another one where I got the second set of score sheets. We didn't sheets know triple that was, Yahtzee. That was but a travel Yahtzee. When I learned about triple Yahtzee as a kid, I was like, well, it's obviously better than regular Yahtzee. So I made my own sheet, and then I went to Kinkos and paid to have it duplicated. Mm. I was very proud of that. That same Kinko's refused to let me Xerox pages out of my Dungeons and Dragons encyclopedia because that would be copyright infringement. <laughs> that was in the early days when copy machines and Kinko's were not exactly common and no one really knew. Like people were afraid of Kinko's for copyright stuff. Mm -hmm. And Kinko's was really weird about that. But yeah, this is a this is a kind of game that if you go to conventions or are commonly introducing games to other people, like hey, would you like to play a game? Or hey, you've come over to my party, let's play a light game while we wait for more people to show up. This is your game, just buy it. Mm. It's also a great game if you want to introduce games like this to your kids. A kid who is too young for Yahtzee, even though I think six year olds can play Yahtzee just fine. If you can count. And you can, if you can play poker, you can play Yahtzee, right? And I was, yeah. my grandpa taught me poker and I was but like, But young almost kids zero. who might not be interested in Yahtzee will play this because you're a monster. You're fucking up other monsters with your claw. Yep. It's also got some after references to old robot movies and old monster movies. And it's just very well done for what yeah. it is. And it's not that expensive. A lot of times games that are of this caliber cost way more than this for no good reason. Yeah. What I think it really is, is just that. You know, there are these certain games that are like the warm up game, right? And you, you think of it as like a spotted or something along Jump those lines, speed. right? But those games, I think, are almost too light, right? They don't really, you know, get you sitting at a table to play a board game. They don't really get you doing any sort of strategies or anything, right? And they get, because they're so light, they get too much play. I think those are better for the stand up. You know, we really don't have time for a game. Let's play spot it, right? I think this is really a real warm-up game, right? You still get the people sitting at the table, you know, playing the game properly, and then you can switch to a real game once they're sitting there like that. As a, It's much harder to switch uh, into a Puerto Rico from a spot it than it is to switch from a King of Tokyo to a Puerto Rico. Yep, and it's so quick to teach that you can get the people who normally wouldn't play a game to just, oh, I'll play it. You'll be done with the whole game in 20 minutes plus five minutes of teaching tops. Yeah, and uh, nerds like the themes. You can get nerds to play, it's even if they're not board game people. Yep. You know, so. But seriously, if you want to be good at games, you haven't played Yahtzee, play Yahtzee. You don't even need to play it with other people. Just play it by yourself. I it's played some solo game. Yahtzees. I played many a solo Yahtzee. Mm -hmm. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night. <laughs>